this is the router I wish I had bought first. And this is the router I think most people should buy when starting woodworking or if you only have a trim router. Let me explain. Before buying this, all I had was this rigid cordless router. And while it's great for what it's meant for, edge profiles mainly, it's not great for other things. Starting out in woodworking, you need a good router to start doing stuff like dados and plunge cuts and just all sorts of things that the router brings to the table. And the reason I say this one is the one you should get, let me show you. This comes with a fixed base and a plunge base for about $200, give or take. Either case, it's really, really worth that price. I'll talk about the fixed base first and then we'll talk about the plunge base. This fixed base, you have a, an adjustment ring here, so you can actually adjust the height of your router bit, obviously, with a fixed base on there. But this ring here gives you some micro control over how much you can raise and lower, and it just lets you get dialed in precise to the precise depth. Also like that it has two handles on each side. That's gonna give you a good grip and a good control over this router. And being a fixed base, it's a lower center of gravity with the fixed base because your hands are right next to your workpiece. You can really control this thing precisely. Speaking of routers, one of my favorite routers in the shop comes from today's sponsor, Carbide 3D. Carbide 3D makes Shape Oco line of CNC's and I have the Shape Oco 4 XXL. And the reason that it's one of my favorite in the shop is it allows me to make some amazing customization projects that would have never been possible without it. And that's one of the great things that a CNC is gonna allow you to bring into your shop is that customization that your customers are wanting. And what I love about Shape Oco line of CNC's is they give you everything you need to get started. The dust collection accessories, the hold downs, the bits, the router, the, the work table, everything. And they're actually really easy to get up, up and running because they offer so much support. If you go to my.carbide3d.com, you'll see that there's tons of lessons there for you to actually learn how to operate the software and the machine. I've had so much fun creating custom trays as well as templates for mallets and things like that that you can duplicate multiple times over. Adding a Shapeoko CNC to your shop is gonna help you actually bring in more income because it's gonna be like having a second employee in here batching out products while you're working on something else. And if you'd like to learn more about Shapeoko line of CNC's, visit carbide3d.com. I'll put a link in the description. So you can actually mount this in a router table, leave it and use the plunge base separately if you so chose. And the power cord just attaches and detaches extremely easily and you can lock it in place and it's not gonna come off. This lever here unlocks it, so it'll, you can remove it from the uh, fixed base itself. Extremely easy, as you just saw. It slides into the plunge base extremely easily and then it also has this lever, lock it in place. The plunge base also has two handles. These are rubber gripped handles, so you can actually get a really good grip when you're plunging. I like that. I also like that the on off switch is right there in thumb's reach and then you can also you know, be able to turn that on and off extremely easy. It's also a variable speed, which means you can actually lower the speed and raise the speed, which is very important because this router has half and quarter inch collets that come with it. And what that means is you can use a half inch bit and you can slow that bit down so it doesn't burn your wood. It actually works a little better in some cases. On this side here, we have an adjustable depth stop, which is in quarter inch increments. And that's very important because if you just wanna take small bites at a time, you can do that easily by just flipping this round, plunge it until it bottoms out, and then just keep doing that until you get to the depth you want. Also, one of the greatest things about this router is the fact that you can actually micro adjust this thing in 64th inch increments. That is huge because that's how I put this play button in there. Had I not had that depth stop setting to where I could micro adjust it, I wouldn't have been able to get this extremely and perfectly flat with the rest of the workbench while also never damaging the veneer on the plywood. That is a huge feat in my opinion and one that actually shocked me that I was able to do that. A few other things about this router that I like, you can, always, you can adjust this step stop at any point that you want and get that perfect cut every single time. And the fact that you can lock this down, just simply push that lever when you get to depth and it'll stay at that depth. You don't have to worry about trying to hold it perfectly. Another feature that I absolutely love about this router is it's a soft start, meaning when I push this on button, it doesn't just jerk. If you'll listen, you'll hear it zzz, and then it comes to life, but that slow start keeps you from damaging things and it's just, it's all around convenient.
Now there's a bunch of different reasons why I should have bought this router first before buying this battery powered router. Now while having a trim router is extremely handy and useful in the shop for edge profiles and some really lightweight routing, if you're just gonna buy one router or just starting out and getting one router, having something like this because it has a plunge base and a fixed base, that's huge and there's tons of uses for that. For one, I was able to cut out the center of this plywood using a plunge router with a cutting bit Plunge down takes small bites so I didn't rip out or tear out the plywood. And I was able to make a perfectly square cut and it was awesome. And then I was able to inset this play button in there. And then I was able to take that same plunge base with a flattening bit and able to go back and forth using a sled that I made to get this perfectly flat. You can't do that in any other way that I know of easily. One extremely important feature in a plunge router is if it plunges smoothly. You don't want it to stick or grab in any way. And I've used this a ton of times and it's still smooth as butter, just like it was the day it come out of the package. This router is two and a quarter horsepower, meaning it has plenty of oof behind it to be able to cut things like dados and three quarter inch plywood. I cut all of these out on this work table using that. I cut the dados for the T-Track in the router table doing that. And I've used it in tons of other applications like cutting dovetails in a portable workbench. This thing at full depth, a 3 8 inch cut, is no problem for it. This has a 12 amp motor, which is what you should be looking for in a, in a bigger router. It's just gonna give you plenty of power for most tasks that you have. I would highly recommend getting the edge guide for your router. I've got one for the Palm router also. I use it so much that uh, it's almost a necessity to me. And for only 30-ish dollars, I think, is what this costs, it's well worth every dollar you have to buy for it. It just makes cutting away from the edge a certain distance extremely easy and convenient, and it speeds your process up a lot. The way the edge guide works, it attaches extremely easy. It slides into the pre-cut holes on either the plunge base or the fixed base has the pre-cut holes in it right there. You just slide it in until you get about where you want it to cut, and then you tighten these thumb screws down right here. On the back side, you see these screws will let you adjust it back here as well. And then there's this fine adjustment knob that you can turn, and it'll adjust it just a little bit so you can dial in that perfect cut. This variable speed router goes from 8,000 to 24,000 RPM, so it gives you plenty of range of speeds for every router bit you're gonna use with this. Another feature that a lot of people don't know about, actually, is this little cap comes off. And you can actually hook a dust hose up there and that's actually the dust collection. If you look down in there, and the, there's actually a little port. It's extremely hard to see on video, but that port goes up in through there and that's where the dust is collected. If you put a hose there, hoses up out of your way, pulls that dust from inside this router base. I like that this ring is on there. That allows me to adjust the height of this fixed base. Then you can use something like these setup blocks here to get your exact depth. Once I have my depth, then I can just lock it in with that switch. And then now I know that I've got 3 eighths of an inch. This isn't going anywhere. It doesn't matter. Unless you drop it, just normal use, you're not going to affect that depth. And this ring just allows that micro adjustment. So you can really dial that in. Time to swap the bits. DeWalt's made it easy. There's just a button here on the side so you can just use one wrench to be able to unloosen. unloosen. I was told unloosen means tightened on another video. To loosen that nut off so that you can get this collet out. If I decide I wanted to put a half inch collet in there, it comes with one of those. And then I can use half inch bits inside the half inch collet, but I also have the option of the quarter inch bits because not all bits come in half inch sizes. I made a video a while back comparing this cordless router to a corded router about in equal strength as this. And I was actually pretty surprised that uh, the outcome that come from that. You can go watch that. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of this video. This is okay for edge profile I talked about before. I tried to cut dados with this several times and every single time I kept having to restart it. It just it's just not made for that. You can't do things like that easily. That's why the plunge router is such a versatile tool that I think every woodworker should have in the shop. And this should be your first router you buy and not the trim router. If you're looking for a couple of things that makes your woodworking life easier, then I highly recommend these setup blocks. I've shown these before in videos. You can either pick up the yellow hammer black kind, the Craig blue kind. They're identical. Like they're, I can't tell any difference in any of them other than one's blue, one's black. I'll drop a link to both. If you like black, you can pick the black up. If you like blue, you can pick the blue up. If you like this video, you'll love the five router bits every woodworker needs. Click that box right there to go watch that video. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also, another one of my favorite videos, the router versus router, corded versus cordless. Click that box right there. Either one of those videos you're gonna love. Go check them out.